Hello there my friends and welcome back to the Scott Reed Project and as I said in my previous video game season is in full swing the pheasant season is underway and my good friend Steve who's here now has bought me a lovely brace of pheasants thank you for that my friend no problem Scott cracking mate cracking yeah, got some are. weight to them aren't they dude yeah they were a good brace of birds they bet well and you shot these brother yes two for two two for two excellent my man and I suppose you uh, want me to do something good with them? Yeah, make me a nice casserole or whatever. <laughs> I will do, my friend. Thanks for that, brother. That's no problem. Cheers, mate. So my mate Steve then has just dropped off those two lovely plump birds. And who doesn't like a brace of plump birds? Who were misses. And like he said, he wanted something special, like a casserole. And I thought, no, we'll go the extra mile and do something extra special for the man. And I thought I'd make a lovely country pate. Now, when we say pate, people automatically think of liver. I assure you, there is no liver in this. This is based on a French pate de campagne. It's purely meat. And this is a game country pate. Stunning. So I've took one of those pheasants then. I boned it out. I've got one rabbit which I boned out. Roughly weigh about three quarters of a pound each. And I've got a pound of fatty pork, shoulder or belly. Just four garlic cloves. I've got some herbs de Provence. You can just use thyme, a bit of port, salt and pepper, and that is it. Now the thinking behind this is he's a shooting man. He shot these pheasants. He's involved in a little local shoot, 10 of his mates. Fantastic little shoot. Not like these old Edwardian batchews. It's just a few lads. They go out every Saturday and shoot a few pheasants. And I thought this would be fantastic to take to the shoot for him to have at lunchtime. So what we're going to do then, this is so, so simple, maybe one of the most simple dishes I've ever cooked. Those ingredients straight into a processor and then mix it until it's coarse. So I will do that and it will be ready just like that. There you go then. All I've done then, that pheasant, that rabbit and that pork, straight in the processor, whizzed it up until it's nice and coarse. And that, believe it or not... Is that done when I said simple I meant simple it's one of those dishes where when you taste it you think my god a lot of work's gone into that well as you see there hasn't beautiful so all we need to do then is season this up with some salt and pepper get the herb de Provence in like I said if you haven't got that just two tablespoons of thyme so I'm gonna crank in some pepper and the trick is with anything that's gonna be served cold you need to season it well. And when you think, oh my God, there's too much seasoning in there, just put a little bit more in, because when it cools, the seasoning mellows. So I'm just gonna whack in some salt, and then a glug of port. A glug, ooh. And then, some herbs de Provence. Now, you can get these in any decent deli. Herb, to, Herb de Provence, we're gonna give it, what, half a tablespoon, is our oregano, rosemary, thyme, fennel, lavender flower, basil, and star anise. And that, my friends, is it. So just give it a mix up, and if you've got a terrine dish, if not like me, use a loaf tin. And when you go through this, now if there's any sinewy bits off the pheasant breasts, as you can see there, or the rabbit, just pull it out. But that, I know it doesn't look much now. Trust me, when it's done, it's gonna be fantastic. So get my bread tin. Get the mix in. Look at that. I like a glove. And then we're going to cover that with foil. I've got my oven preheated to gas mark three. Excuse my fingers. Check up there for the conversion. To me, this is what cookery is all about. Simple ingredients prepared simply. And you're left with a stunning dish at the end of it. So I'm just going to put a bit of baking parchment over it. 
and then some foil roof shut up seal it in so my oven is set to gas mark 3 up there again for the conversion going to be cooked for 90 minutes in a bain marie so in another tin put about an inch of hot water and get it on the middle shelf and forget about it for a while we'll check on that in about 90 minutes man alive what was all that about that is enough to give your kids nightmares that is like a real bad acid trip whose idea was that oh my oh uh moving on swiftly then the terrine has been in for 90 minutes we're looking for a internal temperature of about 66 to 70 so if you can see that there if i put it there like that so that is ideal. So what we need to do then is I've cut some cardboard and put some foil on top. What I'm going to do first, I've emptied out my bain marie, put that in there, put that on there, and then just weight it down with some cans or whatever you've got. And we've got to leave it overnight for 24 hours at least. Then we can have a look at it. So get some old weights on there. What a difference a day makes. So my pate then has been in the fridge overnight. It's been pressed and we are left with this a beautiful looking thing. Now you can go all fancy if you want to and decorate this, but hey ho, it's all about the heat eating. So let's see if I can get this beauty out. Look at that. Oh yes. Rude not to cut a slice. So just have a quick look at what we got. Look at that. Oh yeah. Okay, let's serve this up. So I should take a couple of little slices of my pate. Looking stunning. I got some lovely French bread. So we get some butter on. So that's French bread, a French style pate. Let's keep our integrity. You know the drill. None of that cheese eating surrender monkey is a muck. Coleman's all the way, baby. So give it a bit of that. A bit of this beautiful homemade beetroot pickle, which is absolutely amazing. Get that on. Oh yes. And a couple of these unsightly bad boys. These pickles on the side, smelling amazing. Let's get our knife through there. Just have a look at that and let's taste it. Absolutely, oh yeah, superb. The flavors are amazing, really, really good. Mm. What a beautiful looking spread. And just imagine someone bringing that out to you of a lunchtime on a hunting trip or a shooting day, a fishing trip, or just a picnic. A fantastic seasonal game pate, great bread, great pickles, even better mustard. And I tell you what, it's absolutely amazing. Oh, it's stunning. And that would be best eaten on a beautiful frosty morning. Imagine that, tucking into that, maybe a drop of port or a cup of tea. What more could you ask for? Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Scott Reed Project. That has got to be one of the most tastiest things I've done so far for such little work. Great way to use up any of the game you've got lurking in your freezers. I know we're all guilty of that. You know, get all the pheasant breasts, you know, get your duck out, your pigeon, your rabbit, whatever. Make one of these. But most of all, just give it a try. It is amazing. And if you've liked what you've seen here today, remember, I know I say it all the time, subscribe by clicking down there. Catch me on Facebook, it's Scott Ree or the Scott Ree Project. On there, on Facebook Messenger, we can talk live time, baby. And also on Twitter, at the Scott Ree Project. Right, I'm going to have me another slice of this. It'll be rude not to. But until next time, take care. All the best.
get your game on baby just before I go then, if you want to see where those beautiful pheasants come from, please check out the video link in the comments section. You can see the morning I spent with my good friend Steve who got me these beautiful birds.